another soggy morning but the weather forecast for the next few days is actually looking quite good so I'm hoping that uh, spring has, has now arrived. So I'm spending the next few days walking along the North Downs Way. So the North Downs Way, it's a long distance footpath. It starts in Farnham in Surrey and it goes eastwards to Dover on the Kent coast. And I'll, I'll be doing the Canterbury to Farnham stage. Then after Farnham, I'll be following the St. Swithin's Way towards Winchester. And today I'm just doing a 15 mile walk. I'm walking to a campsite, a Dunn Street campsite. So quite a nice, uh, easy, pleasant walk today. I've just arrived in a little village. It's called Chillum or Chilham. So I'm just going to have a going to have a little break here, and then uh, continue on to the campsite. About eight miles from here now. There's a big stately home here called Chillum Castle. <laughs> just arrived at Dunn Street Farm. So now I'm just going to head up to the campsite. So that's end of day one on the North Downs Way. So this is Dunn Street Farm campsite. It's still very early in the season. I've got the, this field to myself. There is a, another tent just over there, but I think that's been abandoned. So I'm spending the next two days walking to Rochester, which I'm quite looking forward to. I think it's quite a picturesque town. Tomorrow night, I'm just camping in a wood on the way to Rochester. And I think that the forecast is looking good as well for tomorrow. So it's been very blustery today, wet and windy. So now I'm going to settle down with a cup of coffee. So until tomorrow morning, good night. Another slightly chilly and cloudy day, but I think it's staying dry today. It might be getting a bit sunny this afternoon. So that, that'd be quite nice because I'm Hoping to get some nice uh, views along the North Downs Way on the way to Rochester. So today I'm walking to a town called Lenham and then I'll be getting, getting some food in there and then heading up into the woods to camp for the night. Just arrived in the centre of Lenham. This is a very pretty little town. Lots of half-timbered buildings in this part of the country. I'm, I'm, doing, I'm going to do a little detour because I'm quite close to Leeds Castle. I, I like to have a look at that. So it's about four miles away. It's a bit of a boring walk along a, a road, but it, it's only about three miles away from where I'm camping tonight. So I'm going to... Uh, have a look at the castle and then he head up back onto the North Downs Way to camp for tonight. Just arrived at the very impressive Leeds Castle. Leeds Castle is built on islands in a lake formed by the River Len to the east of the village of Leeds. The first record of a building is listed in the Doomsday Survey of 1086 
and in 1119 the first stone castle was built. In the 13th century it came into the hands of King Edward I for whom it became a favourite residence. In the 16th century Henry VIII used it as a home for his first wife Catherine of Aragon. The present castle dates mostly from the 19th century and has been open to the public since 1976. Weather's getting a, a lot better now. I've just got back onto the North Downs Way and I'm just heading towards the woods where I'll be camping tonight. I found a nice spot in the woods, but I think tomorrow when I get to Rochester, I'm going to call it a day because the ground is just so boggy, it's such hard work walking at the moment. In Britain, this has been the wettest March since uh, 1981. So the ground is just, just too muddy to walk. So I think when I go to Rochester, I'm going to call it a day and go home and then wait, wait a while for the ground to dry out a bit and then continue on a journey. So anyway, I'm going to settle down tonight and then tomorrow morning continue to Rochester. So until then, good night. Nice sunny morning today. So today is just a 15 mile walk to Rochester. That's quite a nice wood sculpture. I think it's called the Shepherd. I'm just popping up to see Thurnham Castle. I think it's the ruins of an old Norman castle at the top of this hill. So I'm just going to pop up there and have a look around. I've just arrived at the ruins of Thurnham Castle. And according to the information board, Thurnham Castle is one of three medieval earthwork castles in this part of the North Downs. The others are Binbury Castle and Stockbury Castle. And the castle has a commanding position. It is on the edge of the North Downs, overlooking the Vale of Holmesdale. So from here, it's an hour or so walk to the village of Detling. Where I hope there's a cafe open. I can have a nice cup of coffee before I continue. just arrived at the Detling Community Store and Post Office. They sell hot pasties here, so this is a really nice place to have brunch before I continue on to Rochester. I've just arrived at a megalithic structure called Kit's Cotty House. Now, this was built nearly 6,000 years ago at the beginning of the Neolithic period and it's a chamber which was probably used for burials and it once stood at the end of an 84 metre long mound. The chamber, built of local sarsen stones, is in the shape of a dolmen, a large flat capstone supported on uprights. 
And geophysical survey has shown that the long mound had an irregular shape with shallow ditches on each side. And the, the antiquarian William Lambard first recorded the unusual name of Kit's Cotty House in 1576, and he presumed that it was the burial place of Catigan, a legendary warrior who was supposedly killed in battle against the Anglo-Saxons at nearby Aylesford in 455 AD. Just arrived in the centre of Rochester. My hotel, the reception's open in about 20 minutes, so I'm going to uh, take my bag over to the hotel and then have a look around the castle and the cathedral. So Rochester was the childhood home of Charles Dickens. I'm staying in the Royal Victoria and Bull Hotel and this was actually mentioned in the Pickwick papers. The, on, the, on the plaque here it says it was described the good house with nice beds described by Mr. Jingle in Pickwick Papers and it is also in the Blue Boar in Great Expectation. I'm just going to pop up the High Street and have a look at Rochester's very fine Norman Castle. Just arrived at Rochester Castle. So the castle, the Norman Keep, dates back to 1087 and the architect was a, a chap called Gundolf. He was the Archbishop of Rochester and he was one of uh, William the Conqueror's best architects and he also designed the Tower of London. It's surprising that the, the uh, Norman Keep is still standing because in 1215, there was a large siege here. It was following the signing of the Magna Carta and as a civil war broke out and King John's army laid siege to Rochester Castle in 1215. And they, they dug a big tunnel under the tower that I'm closest to at the moment. And they succeeded in bringing down that tower. But they, even after that, it was still a long time before they actually took the castle and you can see nowadays that the tower that collapsed when they rebuilt it they it's it's round the other three towers are a square square in design and i think that the round uh, towers they're much more stronger in a siege Over the centuries, Rochester has always been an important town and it's due to its location. The bridge I'm approaching now, there used to be a Roman bridge. I'm not sure if it's where the, the modern bridge is now, but when the Romans came to Britain, they built a road called Watling Street, which went from Dover up to London. And this is where it crossed the, the uh, River Medway. And so, Ever since then, this has been a Rochester has always been a strategic, strategically important town because the castle would have protected the bridge crossing the river. And I think this is the lowest crossing point on the River Medway before it goes down to the sea. Unfortunately, the castle grounds are closed at the moment. I think they're preparing for a big festival that's coming up soon. Never mind, I'm going to have a look at the cathedral. So Rochester Cathedral is the second oldest cathedral in England. There's been a church here since 604 AD, but the, 
this cathedral, this was also built by Bishop Gundolf in 1083. This is College Gate and it dates back to around 1334 and this was also mentioned in one of Charles Dickens books. It was, he wrote about it in The Mystery of Edwin Drood and this is the gatehouse in which John Jasper lived. And here's the plaque which mentions that this was Jasper's gatehouse. And the half-timbered house next to the gatehouse is also mentioned in the book. This is where Mr. Tope, the chief verger of the cathedral, lived in, in the book The Mystery of Edwin Drood. I'm just going to have a look at the Guildhall Museum in the centre of town. So this is what it was like on a 19th century ship. This is the Guild Hall and Charles Dickens wrote a lot about Rochester's Guild Hall in the novel Great Expectations. More mementos of Charles Dickens. I think this is a depiction of the 1215 siege. So tomorrow I'm going to pop back home and upload this video. And then I'm going to give it a few days, hopefully the ground will start drying out to then I can continue on my travels. So thank you very much for watching my video and I hope to upload another one soon. Bye!